I'm Krista Madison, Associate Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology at Women and Infants Hospital and the Warren Albert Medical School of Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island. I want to thank ACOG for inviting me to develop these materials for the 64th Annual Clinical Meeting. This is the second of three mini-lectures for the Flip Classroom session on abnormal uterine bleeding. This is a repeat slide from my first mini-lecture on the terminologies and etiologies for abnormal uterine bleeding. I put this slide up as a reminder that abnormal uterine bleeding is a symptom, not a diagnosis, and it's caused by one of these etiologies, either structural causes or non-structural causes. And to underscore the fact that dysfunctional uterine bleeding should no longer be used as a term, and that structural causes, like polyps and leiomyoma, may be seen in the evaluation process for abnormal uterine bleeding, but may not actually be the cause. The distinction between the symptoms and the etiologies is important because knowing what is causing the symptom of AUB will help guide the management strategies and treatment choice. A combination of a structured history with imaging and additional lab testing for appropriate patients can help determine the most likely etiology. Treatment is very dependent on the etiology. We should treat structural causes under the POM classification that we think are the cause of the abnormal bleeding keeping in mind that just because a structural abnormality like polyps or fibroids are found doesn't mean they're the cause of the bleeding. Treatment options vary widely and depend on the problem. For AUBC, patients should be referred for the treatment of coagulopathy. AUBI and AUBN, clinicians should address the iatrogenic or other factors, but also may consider trying AUBO and E treatments. And then for the remainder of this talk, we're going to focus on the treatment of AUBO and AUBE. What I will cover in this talk is just one piece of the puzzle, average treatment effectiveness. Other considerations for treatment of abnormal uterine bleeding are the desire for future fertility, regional availability of treatments, contraindications or risk factors for adverse events, costs, and the other treatments tried. While hysterectomy is the definitive treatment for AUB, a multitude of alternative, less invasive medical and surgical treatments are available. Effectiveness of these treatments can differ for women with AUBE and women with AUBO as causes for their heavy menstrual bleeding. So you have to focus on the literature in the area. And this is hard because studies can be difficult to compare and interpret as their populations are not always clear. Most studies excluded women with irregular menses. In the past 30 years, approximately 30 randomized clinical trials have been performed comparing non-surgical treatments of heavy menstrual bleeding. Most studies, so approximately three quarters, excluded women with irregular menses outright, so not included in the study at all. And then two thirds required women to lose 80 milliliters of blood per cycle in order to be included in the study. So in this talk, the focus is chronic AUB, bleeding that's been present for the majority of the last six months. And we're going to focus on the evidence for treatment behind the levonorgestrel intrauterine system, oral progestins, combined oral contraceptives, tranexamic acid, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. In the top right-hand corner of each of the slides, I've noted whether or not the research pertains to AUBO only, so presumed ovulatory dysfunction, AUBE only, presumed endometrial dysfunction, or unclear or mixed, because the focus of this talk, again, is on AUBO and AUBE. So the first treatment to discuss is the levonorgestrel intrauterine system. So the levonorgestrel intrauterine system releases 20 micrograms of levonorgestrel daily for five years. It causes suppression of endometrial proliferation, an inactive histology, thin epithelium, and decidualization of the stroma. Overall, it causes this suppression of endometrial proliferation, which is thought to be why it works. Most studies on the levonorgestrel intrauterine system are only for AUBE, patients with heavy and regular bleeding. They excluded women with irregular menses suggestive of AUBO, although given its mechanism of action, it's probably a good choice for AUBO as well. Studies have shown that the levonorgestrel intrauterine system reduces menstrual blood loss by 71 to 95 percent. In terms of reducing menstrual blood loss, it's the most effective, best tolerated non-surgical option for heavy and regular menstrual bleeding. One small study did show that the reduction of menstrual blood loss is the same for the levonorgestrel intrauterine system and extended cycle oral progestins, which we'll get to later in this talk, but that patient satisfaction was much less for the oral progestin group. And head-to-head -head studies have shown that in terms of reduction of menstrual blood loss, it's more effective than combined oral contraceptives, luteal phase oral progestins, depomedroxyprogesterone acetate, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories.
Two recent randomized control trials showed greater reductions in bleeding, 83 to 87%, with a levonorgestrel intrauterine system than with combined oral contraceptives. Another study, which had more of a mixed population, showed greater reductions in bleeding, 73%, than 5 milligrams of daily oral medroxyprogesterone acetate, which would be considered low dose, or intramuscular depomedroxyprogesterone acetate. Lastly, looking at a randomized clinical trial of 236 women compared the levonorgestrel intrauterine system to hysterectomy. And they have 10 years of follow-up. How you interpret the data depends on whether you look at it as glass half full or glass half empty. Although 46% of women randomized to the levonorgestrel intrauterine system had a hysterectomy within the subsequent 10 years, 54% of women willing to have a hysterectomy at the time of randomization, because at randomization women had to be able to accept either treatment, 54% of these women willing to have a hyst avoided hysterectomy in the subsequent 10 years. This study found that the levonorgestrel intrauterine system group had less costs overall and no difference in quality of life scores. The next treatment we'll talk about is combined oral contraceptives. Physiologically, it makes sense that oral contraceptives would work in treating abnormal uterine bleeding by inhibiting the growth and development of the endometrium. When the Cochrane Review was performed about six years ago, there was only one study by Fraser et al., which compared combined oral contraceptives, Danazol, and two different NSAIDs for treatment with heavy and regular bleeding. Though they found no differences between the groups, the six women treated with combined oral contraceptives had a 3% reduction in menstrual blood loss at three months. However, luckily the evidence based on combined oral contraceptives for treating abnormal uterine bleeding caused by endometrial dysfunction is becoming increasingly more robust. Four studies evaluating the effectiveness of combined oral contraceptives as treatment for heavy menstrual bleeding have been published since 2009. So two randomized control trials looked at a novel combined oral contraceptive that used a different dosing regimen and a unique estrogen compound. And these studies found that combined oral contraceptives reduced menstrual bleeding by up to 69% and that 29 to 44% of women in the combined oral contraceptive group compared to the placebo group had normalization of menses. Two other RCTs published compared combined oral contraceptives to the levonorgestrel intrauterine system. Though they were less effective than the levonorgestrel intrauterine system, they were effective at decreasing menstrual blood loss and improving quality of life. And it should be mentioned one of these studies used a low-dose combined oral contraceptive pill. So those previous slides referred to treatment of patients with heavy and regular bleeding, AUBE, so caused by endometrial dysfunction. Combined oral contraceptives are also commonly used in clinical practice to regulate menstrual cycles for women with ovulatory dysfunction, AUBO. And in this circumstance, they may work by inhibiting the growth and development of the endometrium and exogenously cycling the hormones. Physiologically, it makes a lot of sense, although the evidence is quite limited. This one study, so one randomized clinical trial, showed that they're likely effective at regulating bleeding and showed that 73% of combined oral contraceptive users reported bleeding was improved. However, this study included a very heterogeneous group of bleeders, ranging from scant and infrequent to heavy and irregular. Oral progestins are powerful anti-estrogens that block the estrogen effect on the endometrium and achieve withdrawal bleeding. They can be useful for both AUBE and AUBO, but the dosing regimens are quite different. So for AUBE, extended oral progestin, so oral progestins for at least 21 days of the month may be effective treatment. And one study showed that by giving norethindrone acetate 5 milligrams TID for days 5 to 26 of the menstrual cycle resulted in an 87% reduction in menstrual blood loss. However, their use may be limited by tolerability, and women have reported not liking the prevalence of side effects such as breast tenderness, bloating, and headaches. I want to note here before we move on to the next slide that luteal phase progestins for 10 to 14 days of the cycle are not effective for treating patients with heavy and regular bleeding and have shown to be less effective than all other therapies. This leads us into the slide on oral progestins for AUBO. So for AUBO, luteal phase oral progestins administered for 10 to 14 days of the menstrual cycle may be effective in treating heavy and irregular bleeding, though the data are quite limited. Administered during days 10 to 14 of the menstrual cycle, these progestins can reduce menstrual bleeding by up to 48%, although studies in this area are quite small. Looking at another progestin agent, depomedroxyprogesterone acetate, 
Most data for its use are based on the amenorrhea rates shown in the contraceptive literature. However, one study published in 2008 looked specifically at treating women with abnormal uterine bleeding with a mixed population, so AUBE and AUBO, both involved in the study, with Depo-Provera, and they showed no difference between low-dose oral medroxyprogesterone acetate and Depo, and that both were inferior to the levonorgestrel intrauterine system. One of the issues with using Depo-medroxyprogesterone acetate for treatment of heavy menstrual bleeding is the unpredictability of response, that women may still have irregular bleeding. And once you've given it, it's, it's hard to manage it if the patient's not happy with that treatment regimen. Tranexamic acid has been studied only for patients with AUBE, heavy and regular bleeding. And it works by decreasing fibrinolysis at the level of the endometrium. Studies have shown that it reduces menstrual blood loss by 30 to 55 percent and that it's better than luteal phase progestins and NSAIDs, but it hasn't been compared to combined oral contraceptives, extended cycle progestins, or the levonorgestrel intrauterine system. Patients are supposed to take tranexamic acid only on the days of bleeding, and it's taken as two 650 milligram tablets TID for a maximum of five days per month. Another treatment for AUBE is NSAIDs. So NSAIDs decrease the conversion of arachidonic acid to prostaglandin and shift the imbalance in the endometrium of patients with heavy bleeding to favor the vasoconstrictive prostaglandins. There are limited studies out there, but they've shown that NSAIDs can be effective in treating heavy and regular bleeding with a 20 to 40% reduction in menstrual blood loss. There's no difference between the different NSAIDs in terms of their effectiveness and they're less effective than tranexamic acid in the levonorgestrel intrauterine system. Data are currently limited comparing NSAIDs to luteal phase progestin and combined oral contraceptives. So the take-home points for the treatment of abnormal uterine bleeding is first that you must consider the etiology behind the patient's heavy bleeding. Some treatments are effective for irregular bleeding and not regular bleeding. Some are only studied for regular bleeding, but does that mean that they won't work for irregular bleeding? And many studies only include patients with confirmed menstrual blood loss of 80 milliliters per cycle, which may not reflect the population that clinicians are caring for in their practice. And the other note that research in this area is plagued by small sample size, variety of comparison groups, and limited number of studies, so clinicians need to be on the lookout for new published literature in this area. Lastly, this is just one piece of the puzzle, average treatment effectiveness. And for AUBE, heavy and regular bleeding, the levonorgestrel intrauterine system is the most effective, but also effective are combined oral contraceptives, tranexamic acid, 21 days of progestin, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. And for AUBO, heavy and irregular bleeding, cyclic combined oral contraceptives, luteal phase progestins may be effective, and there's limited data on other treatments, but given how they work physiologically, they may also be considered.